I mean. Wow, it's a little, Facebook, why are you so blurry? Hmm, hold on. Let me see if it's this. I'm gonna clean my camera. <laughs> I don't know that that did anything. Y'all, it's Friday and I didn't take a shower. Um, I did wash my face, but I didn't put any makeup on, so my rosacea is popping. Welcome to Friday. Did that, okay. It's, it is what it is. It is what it is. We are making it work. You know what? Give me a thumbs up, give me a heart if you are watching this right now and you also didn't shower today because it's Friday and you're just doing your freaking best, okay? Give me a hand raise if you're doing your freaking best. That's what we're about right now. It is day five of book club from a new book, didn't see that coming. If you didn't see what I posted this morning on social um, and you have a second, you should look. A couple different readers did something I've never heard of before called book, book face, where you take the cover of a book and you like make it your own face, which is hard to explain, but if you look at the picture, it's really funny and people are creative and I love it. So yesterday we talked all about, we talked about perspective. Sorry, it took me a minute. I need some coffee. And today we're going to talk about mindset. If you want to dig into perspective, go watch yesterday's video. It's on IGTV on Instagram and it's up on Facebook. Today we're gonna to talk about mindset. And a lot of people get these two confused. So here's how I explain it. Actually, I'm just gonna to read to you how I explain it. Wait, isn't it? Wait, courage, perspective, I got it. Chapter five, didn't see that coming, here we go. The now that we've gotten around the notion of perspective and how it colors how we look at things, let's go a bit further. Let's get into the idea of mindset. Perspective and mindset are incredibly similar because both are influenced by our past and both are pieces of ourselves we are fully in control of. We talked all about this yesterday. You are in control of your perspective. Go watch the video from yesterday if you wanna dig in. But. There is a distinct difference between the two. Perspective is the way you see the world. Mindset is what you think about what you see. I like to think of mindset as an unformed piece of clay. All right, this is one of my favorite analogies I have ever written, so put on your cozy socks, pull up a blanket, grab your coffee, and listen into this story, because it's funny. We're talking about perspective. I like to think, we're talking about mindset, wow. I like to think of mindset as an unformed piece of clay. Personally, I don't have a ton of experience with pottery, save the one time in fifth grade art class when we were allowed to create something for Mother's Day. Each of us was given a blob of gray clay and tasked with turning it into anything, literally anything our 10 year old selves thought our mothers would love. I made a puffin. While the other kids created rough hewn bowls to hold jewelry or coffee cups that were decidedly not seaworthy, I made an Atlantic puffin. I know what you must be thinking, how precious. Her mother collected puffin figurines and baby Rachel decided to add to the menagerie. Not exactly. My mother has never one time taken an interest in puffins, Atlantic or otherwise, but fifth grade me had recently learned about them and I wanted to try my hand at a faithful recreation. I was utterly captivated by their adorable squatty body and their multicolored beak. The piece turned out just darling. I'll admit, and my mother seemed to like it, but sadly, that is my single experience with personal pottery making. The only other knowledge I have on the subject, I learned through Patrick Swayze. If you've never had the fortune of experiencing the movie Ghost, I'm sad for you because it was a masterpiece. Give me a heart or a thumbs up if you have seen the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze, RIP, and Demi Moore, and Whoopi, Fantastic. In that movie, Patrick Swayze is married to Demi Moore and through a series of unfortunate events, 
he becomes a ghost and then teams up with Whoopi Goldberg to solve the mystery of his own death. That stuff is good. But the great moment, if you've seen it, you and I both know it's the scene at the potter's wheel. If memory serves me correctly, Demi is an artist and she's sitting with the wheel making something out of clay when Patrick comes up behind her and the Righteous Brothers start playing and clay goes from PG to R-rated real fast. It's epic and I don't care what anybody says, nothing gets close to the panache of an R-rated makeout scene from the 90s. Am I right? That's not the point though. The focus of this story is on the unformed clay that Demi and Patrick are inappropriately manipulating on that wheel. That's what I want you to imagine when it comes to mindset. Okay, so we're talking about mindset today. We're on day five of book club from a new book. And I want you to think of your mindset as an unformed piece of clay. Stick with me. This is a really good example. Just stay with me. The absolute greatest book on this subject is by Carol Dweck. It's called Mindset. And please, please, please add it to your TBR pile. That means to be read for my non-book nerds. If you want to take a deeper dive into the idea of mindset. The gist of the book is the idea that we all have one of two mindsets. A fixed mindset, meaning that you believe that whatever talents, skills, knowledge, or abilities you have are fixed and cannot be changed. Let me say it again. A fixed mindset. These are people who believe that you were born into the world with whatever knowledge, skill, talent you have, or a growth mindset, meaning that you believe that you can develop new talents, learn new skills, gain more knowledge, and abilities as long as you're on the planet. Fixed mindset people have a past that shapes their perspective, the way they see the world around them. And here's the kicker. They don't believe it's possible to make themselves different or better. When they see people grow or change in ways that they can't, they believe that those people are just wired differently. Now think for a moment, do you know someone in your life that has a fixed mindset? Your mama, your sister, your partner, your best friend. Maybe right now you're having a moment where you're like, oh crap, I have a fixed mindset, right? Do you have someone in your life that has a fixed mindset that believes that when other people succeed at something that they just, they had more resources, they're wired differently, they, they you know, knew somebody who helped them, they don't understand that they are in control of their evolution. Um, let me get into growth mindset. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so I go a lot into fixed mindset here, and I say this is fixed mindset. Imagine that clay again. Think of your mindset as a formless piece of clay, and this time, instead of Demi, you're the potter. You're the one mushing it with your hands. If you need to imagine Patrick sitting behind you shirtless, go ahead, I won't ask questions. As you form it, that piece of clay becomes a vase or a coffee mug or a bowl or a puffin. You can work with it and turn it into any shape you imagine and then reform it into something new and different. So long as you continue to work with it and continue to add more clay or more water, it can grow and change and exist forever in a state of becoming. That is a growth mindset. As long as you keep adding new ideas, new experiences, new challenges, new talents and skills, you will forever be able to alter the way you think about what you see. If we're using unformed clay as an analogy for a growth mindset, you might think that a fixed mindset is clay after it's been fired in a kiln. After all, when a potter is done with their work, they set the piece permanently by baking it in a fire. Once they understand that they have a fixed mindset, most people who own up to it will fight back against this notion. I never chose to stop growing, they'll say. I didn't permanently set anything. 
But here's the thing, and y'all, if you don't get anything else out of our time together, get this right here. Here's the thing. You can bake the clay and make a purposeful choice to lock it into that form forever, but that is not the only way to set it in stone. The other way to commit to a fixed mindset is by not touching the thing at all. Think about it. Even with my limited knowledge of pottery, even I know that if you don't keep working the clay, if you just leave it sitting out in the open, unattended and uncared for, it will dry out and turn brittle and hard all on its own. I don't believe that people with a fixed mindset consciously choose to live this way. I believe the way they've been programmed to think makes them believe that there isn't another option. Their perspective has them trapped. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna, okay. All right, anyway, so talking about growth mindset, talking about fixed mindset, is this something that you guys have dug into? Is this something that you thought about? Is this something that affects your life? Do you believe right now that you can make choices, that you can learn, that you can gain knowledge and it will help you to grow and to become something more? Or do you sort of stay in this notion that this is who I am and this is all I'll ever have, right? Where do you fall in this place? All right, I'm gonna see what y'all are what y'all are saying. Someone just said, what book is this? This is my new book, it's called Didn't See That Coming. But if you want to read on growth mindset, my absolute favorite thing on this subject is called Mindset by Carol Dweck. Um, someone just said, yes, I have changed my mindset so much. What was the book? It's my new book, it's called Didn't See That Coming, but the book on mindset is called Mindset by Carol Dweck. Um, Alyssa just said, I see both sides, it's so hard to get out of my own head, 100%. But even the knowledge that you can change is powerful. Because there are times where you can fall into the rut of believing things that you used to believe, but if you will go back just to the knowledge, you know what, I know there's another way, I know there are answers out there, I know there are resources, I know there are information, I know those things are out there. Even just the awareness that there is the possibility of change is incredibly empowering when you are feeling discouraged. Um, let's see. Um, Oh, I'm reading, I'm reading. Renee said, I believe there is more, but scared. Feeling scared of the possibility. Like, can we dig into that? Tell me what's scary. And, and I know, I, I appreciate Renee. I, I love when anybody on here speaks their truth because I think that there are other people who are thinking the same thing. So what feels scary about the knowledge that there are answers out there? One of my favorite things to remind people just because this truly is the story of my life, of my success in business, of my success as an author. Everything that you want to know, literally everything that you want to know exists right now on the internet for free. Everything. You, I, whatever, you could name anything that you do right now, you, teachers, police officers, people in the military, people with a side hustle, you own a bakery, you want to be better at barbecue, like literally anything that you want to know how to improve in right now on the internet for free that information exists so then that tells me like at conference i'll do this a lot where i'll be like who knows that that's true raise your hand if you know that it's true that this information exists on the internet for free and everybody raises their hand so then my response to that is okay keep your hand up if you know that the information is out there you know that it's free and you actively pursue it every single day and 98 percent of the people in the room drop their hand and i then my follow-up is like okay so your lack of knowledge is a choice so you choose to stay here so you choose to stay stuck 
You choose to say, if you know, I didn't say it, you said it. You said that you know that the information is out there. You said that you know it won't cost you any money. You know that that's true, but you spend all the extra time that you have in a day scrolling on Instagram or fighting people over politics or you know watching Netflix. And that's okay. There are times and seasons to rest and recuperate, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about those of you who want to change your life. Your heart calls you to something else. You know that there's something else out there for you, right? So if you know that it's out there and you know that it's free, and even if you only have 30 minutes a day to pursue that information, why don't you go do it? So Renee says, you know, it feels scary, right? That's real. Let's talk about the fear. Because one of the things I know to be true is that if you will remove, like if you just talk about what you're afraid of, you can take the fear away from it. If you can just say it out into the world, like, oh, I'm afraid of this thing. I'm afraid of that. I don't know what will happen. Today we're talking about mindset. Someone's like, what are we talking about? We're talking about mindset. So tell me, be honest, I'm watching Facebook comments. I'm watching Instagram comments. What about this feels scary? Because I can come up with 27 different ways to motivate you guys in this area, but I need to know what it is specifically that you, okay, great, great place to start. Overwhelming with all of the online information. You're right, it is overwhelming. I like to think of this now, y'all gotta know that I grew up without any money. And so most of my life, if I was wearing clothes to school, they were hand-me-downs or they were things that we bought from the Goodwill. So I don't care, I'm 37 years old, I've worked my freaking butt off, I am incredibly lucky, I'm incredibly privileged, I have resources now, I could shop wherever. I freaking love Goodwill. I will shop at Goodwill until I die, I do not care how much money, I love it. I actually think it's more exciting to buy something cool for $5, like I think that's way cooler. And in fact, so much of my clothes, you guys will be like, where'd you get that? I'm like, I got this 12 years ago. I just keep the same stuff. When it's good, when it's quality, I hold on to it. I love Goodwill, I promise there's a point. Anybody, anybody else here love a flea market? You love a yard sale, you love Goodwill, let's say pre-COVID when we felt safer about doing that. If you like to go look for things. You like to go look for finds. You like to go look for like a flea market, a Goodwill, a yard sale stuff. Anybody who enjoys doing that knows you're gonna have to dig. You're gonna have to dig. You're, you're going through, right? You're gonna have to dig through all of the stuff that you find at the Goodwill to find the one thing that's awesome. So with the information that's available to you on the internet, and it's free and someone said it's overwhelming because there's so much stuff out there, absolutely. But you're gonna have to dig. No one's gonna serve it up to you. No one's gonna give you the magic pill. No one's gonna give you the magic bullet. No one's gonna like tell you the thing. That's the cost. That's the price. And, and maybe even you flip it, right? And you make it fun and you make it exciting and you're like, okay, how can I find the information and what can I do and what can I sort through and what can I look through to find this stuff? That's what it's gonna have to be. There is no, like, you're gonna have to flip the overwhelm. And, you know, yesterday we talked about changing our perspective. Maybe your perspective can be one of like, my gosh, how lucky am I to live in a time where this much information is accessible to me? Because those of us who are older, we did not grow up with the internet. We did not grow up to access to this information. So the fact that it's all out there now is so incredible. So if you are just joining us, I was using an example. Someone was saying, I'm like, there's information out there on the internet, whatever it is that you wanna know how to do, the information exists right now, books at the library, Google, YouTube, podcasts that exist. She said, I felt overwhelmed by how much there is. And I'm like, yeah, you're gonna have to look. I was using Goodwill as my example. And I'm just now realizing there are people from all over the world and Goodwill doesn't exist globally, but hopefully those of you in the US knew what I was talking about. Okay. So what else feels overwhelming? What feels overwhelming right now that you're like, the information's out there, I feel scared. Like, what is it, right? What is the thing? Let's 
see. Dig through the loads of info to find the gold and the jewels of what you need, absolutely. The other thing is that once you find information, you're gonna have to test it. You're gonna have to test that information and see which things work for you, right? Okay, what else? I'm gonna dig through here. Mm. <laughs> Lots of people love it on the Goodwill. Thank you, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Um, the possibility of failing and hurting people around me. Okay, so who is afraid of failure? Who has a fear of failure? Lots of people. Um, and I wanna understand this too. Um, let's see, fear of failure. Oh my gosh, I just lost you. What'd you say? Oh, Rachel. Rachel Gonzalez said the possibility of failing and hurting people around me. Can we be real right now, Rachel? Why would your failure affect other people? I can only think of one way that your failure would affect other people and that's financial. That is the only time that I can think of where truly, if you invested your own money into let's say a business and you have a family that's counting on you for financial reasons and that business failed, that, that makes you fear failure. That's the one example I can think of. So let me talk about the other, if it's not that, then this is a story you're telling yourself in your own mind. Because if you're pursuing something that doesn't affect your finances and therefore can't affect other people around you, then, then the, fail, the fear of failure you have is a made up story you have in your own head or you're living your life trying to please other people, which is a recipe for disaster, right? So um, if you can comment again and give me more context, I can speak to that thing exactly. I'm gonna scroll through and see if you commented again to tell me if it is a business. The other um, thing that I would say when it comes to business is don't, don't, I talk about this in the book, there was an entire chapter in the new book on financials. Do not risk your family's financial health in a business venture, period. I know that there are people who disagree, people are, you hear those amazing stories where someone's like, we mortgage our house and that's how we, no, no freaking way. If you want to pursue a new business, if you wanna pursue a side hustle, Work to earn the money to be able to afford to do that thing in a way that doesn't affect your family financially or doesn't affect, if you're single, living your life, you're the only one counting on you, great. Go do whatever the heck you want. And if the business venture doesn't work, go get a job, you know, work in a Starbucks. That's, but if you, this is just my belief. If you wanna start a business, if you wanna start a side hustle, I hate when people, they're like, well, Rachel, you said to dream big. Rachel, you said to call your shot and go, yeah, but never, never at the detriment of your family. Never, never, never. If I wanted to go start a side business or a side hustle, I'd go get a side job to be able to afford. I mean, this is how I started my company. I got a, a side job and I saved the money in order to be able to do the thing until I could quit my job and then I used the money and started my business. So, all right. Um, let's see, I'm reading, I'm reading. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to do, do, do. Um, okay, so she answered me, so I wanna get back into this. So she, she said both. I make up stories and I always wanna please others because I feel like I can't handle the consequences. Okay, this is for Rachel, I, this keeps getting caught. This is for Rachel, and I'm not talking about myself, this, her name's Rachel too. This is for the rest of you. This is gonna be my last thought of the day because we're talking about this idea of perspective and mindset. And I'm gonna give you a mindset, I'm gonna give you two things. Because a lot of times the people who follow me are people who are entrepreneurs, dreamers, you wanna have a book, you wanna have a podcast, you have a platform, you're sort of wanting to see how to elevate that or you wanna like bring things into your life, great. So this is who I'm speaking to right now. Let me tell you two things that I know to be true. Rachel, number one, you are not going to create anything from a scarcity mindset. A scarcity mindset is operating out of a place of nothing works, everything's hard, there's no money, there's no customers, we're in COVID, um, you know, everyone's in, like that mindset and, and parts of that, you guys, there are parts of that that are real. Uh, we're in a recession, millions of people are out of work, so many people are struggling financially, like those things are real. 
But if you are a business owner, for real, listen to me, if you are a business owner right now and that is the only thing that you focus on, you are, you're in trouble. You have to look at where you want to go. You have to stay in the space. Like I was talking to my finance guy yesterday and I'm like, I always want to know what's real but even when things are hard financially, I can't exist in that space. Because if I exist in like, oh man, COVID and like things are different and it's harder and whatever, I will never be able to grow. I will never be able to do anything. It will paralyze you, Rachel. If you're just joining me, I am not talking to myself. I'm talking to someone on Facebook named Rachel. You have to focus on where you want to go. You have to focus on the, like, where am I headed to? right? Where am I headed to? Not, not what is, but what do I believe is possible? Because if you wake up every day, let's say you're doing, you're selling things online, you're selling product online and you wake up every day and you're like, there are no customers. Nobody wants the stuff in my Etsy store. Nobody wants anything in my Jane.com store. Nobody, nobody wants what I'm selling. Look, I'm looking at my Shopify further proof. Nobody wants anything that I've got. Okay. That's one way to show up. And you, the other ways that you wake up in the morning, you're like, there are customers out there. Someone wants this quilt. I made this quilt. I made this screen print tea. I made this coffee mug. There are people right now all over this country. Hundreds of thousands of people are going to buy a coffee mug today. Why not buy the coffee mug for me? So if someone's going to buy a coffee mug, I just got to get it out into the world. I got to let them know. I got to talk about it on social. I got to create a blog post. I got to watch a thing on how to do Pinterest better. Maybe I'm going to make a YouTube like... If you are in a, a, a space, if you focus on abundance, if you focus on the possibility what could be, that is when it's, you have the potential to see possibility. Uh, this is where I think people get it so wrong. They, they hear me being positive. Sorry, I'm moving and shaking this thing. They hear me being positive and they're like, you don't see life as it really is. I'm like, no, girl, I for real see life as it is. But I also know that I have kids counting on me and I have a team of people counting on me to show up and do this work. And so I have to exist in a place of possibility because from a place of possibility, you can see the opportunities that are there. And Rachel, if you wake up every day and you're like, oh man, I'm gonna let this person down. I'm gonna lose the money. I'm not gonna find any clients. I'm not gonna be able to sell the thing. I'm not, you will create that reality. It, it just is. I think it's like, I think it's Confucius. I think it's that old. Like whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So you have to start every single day with the mindset. And like a lot of times, Gretchen Rubin has this quote that I love. She says, act the way you want to feel. Act the way you want to feel. And so if you wake up in the morning and you don't have the right mindset for the life that you want to have, the company you want to create, the book you want to write, the words that you want to speak, act like it. This is the one time where I think faking it till you make it is real. Fake, like the kind, like be that in your own mind, not to anybody else. You don't have to put it out in the world, but to your own mind, you're like, okay, girl, what's up? What's the possibility? You know how often I talk to myself in the mirror? I coach myself all the time. Because you guys, for real, this is any of you, any of you right now who are in business, and who use social media or the internet to be in business. Oh man, I'm, I'm going over as per usual and I think I have to go because I have a podcast interview, but let me finish this thought. Any of you who are trying to create something using the internet or social right now, you are gonna have to get a thick skin. You are gonna have to be okay with people not liking you. You're gonna have to get over your people pleasing tendencies. If you want to do this work, you want to grow your company, you want to find your community, you want to change the world, you're going to have to get over the fact that people don't like you. Because now the world is wired, wired to look for problems, wired to comment with mean things, wired. I was talking yesterday, I did an interview with a YouTube gamer, like this really big gamer for my new podcast, which is so fun. It's all like celebrity interviews. It's so much fun. And I'm talking to people and they're sharing things that I don't know anything about. So I was talking to a YouTube gamer and he's talking about what it is to be a gamer at this level. And he's one of the biggest in the world, like massively successful. And so I'm talking to him about social media and like comments and how does he navigate that, whatever. And he was like, oh man, it is so hard. 
He's like, most of the time I'm fine, but some days I get on there. And he's not 12. He's a grown man. And he's like, some days I get on there and like people are so mean. And they're writing such hateful things and they're cussing me out. And like, it just has become the trend to look for awful, right? But he's like, but if I don't, if I'm not there, then I can't interact with the people who are there who want to know about the video game or who want to play with me or who want to like see the thing that I'm creating. So it's the price of admission. So if you want to be able to do things in the world or grow in whatever way you want, you are going to have to be okay. You're go- and it, it takes every day. Act. Yep, I'm here. I'm still showing up. I'm still doing this thing. That's what it is. You get to choose your mindset. Okay. It was a very long-winded conversation about mindset, guys. If you want to do the book club version of this, the Target edition has questions in the back that you can fill in, um, but you can get Didn't See That Coming anywhere books are sold. If you want the audio version, I narrate it. Ebook, physical book, anywhere in the world. It's the new thing. Um, You don't have to buy it. Borrow it from a friend, get it from the library, do not buy it if you don't want to, that's so fine. Um, The other thing that I keep saying, because I think it's important, this book is not for everybody. This is specifically written for people who are going through something hard or have gone through something hard and are still carrying the emotions of that. So this is about, it. the tagline is putting life back together when your world falls apart. So if you're having a great time, if you're killing it, if everything's going well, this is not the book for you. But if you are going through something hard, it might be the book for you or for someone you know. All right, it's Friday. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I hope everything in your world is as good as it can be. And I hope you remember that your perspective and your mindset about what's happening in the world is more important than what is actually happening in the world. All right, love y'all. Have a fantastic day.